Welcome to the Grog Shop and part two in my 36 to 48 volt golf cart conversion project. In part one, we covered the prep work, and in this video, I'll cover all the electrical upgrades that need to be done to make it happen. Okay, so quick look at the parts list that we need to have uh, 48 volt batteries, of course, 48 volt charger for those batteries a 48 volt capable motor controller and a heavy duty solenoid. Okay, so first up I'm gonna mount the motor controller and here again is the carriage bolt migration for mounting from the old on the right to the one I'm gonna use on the left. I chose to use an Alltrax SR48500. So from the Alltrax manual here, we can see that uh, it has a capability of providing 575 amps peak and even 500 amps continuous over two minutes but 380 amps uh, over an infinitely continuous period should you have infinite batteries now note that i'm not changing out the stock motor so at this point um, this is really overkill for the stock motor in fact it could easily melt the stock motor down um, if if you're not careful with it there is a capability in this controller to set a current limit. Um, I'm actually not setting that right now. I figure if the stock motor goes, it goes and it's time for an upgrade. When I do upgrade the motor, I'll, I'll definitely be making a video about that. So be sure to check back if you're interested. Next up, I want to mount the solenoid or contactor depending on how you like to say it um, but to do that first we need to mount the diode and resistor that comes with it so there's a pre-charge resistor and a, a diode to prevent um, killing the killing the controller and uh, they come with it as you can see here the resistor is a 10 watt 470 ohms and the resistor mounts directly across the high current terminals And for anyone who might not know, the resistors are not directional, so it doesn't matter which way it goes. Okay, next up will be the diode. The diodes, on the other hand, are indeed directional. And uh, there's a little stripe on the end of the black cylinder that indicates positive. Um, there's also a red um, insulator on the end of the positive end here. And they are directional, but um, you could mount them either way on the solenoid uh, as long as the rest of the wires that are positive or negative are mounted accordingly. There's one of the wiring diagrams from the Altrax manual. Below I'll put some links to this manual and to other wiring diagrams that I use. To mount it, I'm going to use this bracket that uh, my old solenoid was mounted to. I did have to drill out one of the... Um, mounting holes for the solenoid just a bit so it's sort of an oval shaped hole in order to get the holes to align right. Okay, next up I want to mount the V-Glide and if you clean it up like I did you have to put the bolts in separately uh, which mount the plastic to the bracket to the frame and you know you really have to sort of ninja these bolts in there between the battery trays and everything else um, but just stick with it and get her done. Okay, so next up I loaded on the 48 volt battery pack. I hooked up a few of the four gauge cables that I had. Um, my cable guy uh, didn't bring me enough cables, so I had to redo some more cables later. 
And the 48 volt charger I decided to use was a DPI AccuSense battery charger and um, it's, it has a transformer and some additional electronics inside. A little confusion about the mid, I do have crown battery so I was tempted to use mode 4 which does say crown but in reality mode 4 is for AGM so I went back to uh, mode 2 as you can see here. So now I've got some more cables hooked up. Um, pretty much it's completely wired up at this point. Now you can take a quick look at the solenoid and which wires are going where. Um, basically, you know, red, my positive lead from my diodes coming straight into the red, um, what they call KSI, and then the white and black there, that's the throttle, which ends up going back to the V glide. Here you can see the 400 amp fuse. I can see the FNR switch and the charging receptacle are all wired up as well. So pretty much you follow the wiring diagrams as discussed in part one and it's, it's just like a big puzzle. You're just putting the big puzzle together which you want to be very careful and methodical of course. Note that I have a two wire output D-Glide. Some people may have a three wire. Um, this is basically like a rheostat. So with everything wired up and the batteries installed, I want to go ahead and uh, test the charger out, see how it works. So the Altrax has a USB connection and this is their toolkit app and here you can set the throttle type. Mine came um, set for club car but that didn't work too good so I ended up putting it on a 0 to 5k 2 wire which makes sense to me according to how my V-Glide works. Um, there's different configurations though for the V-Glide so um, you just got to find the one that works for your configuration. Here again are the two throttle wires I have, the black and the white coming out of the V-Glide. Of course those are new wires, I um, ended up replacing a lot of wires in this thing. Inside the tool there's this monitor page which is uh, very helpful, so here I'm going to do a test with the throttle. Well, you can see it says shut down and pre-charge fail, mm, not good. So besides using the USB connection, you can also look at the LED, it has uh, flash patterns. Here you can see I get one green followed by six reds. And then uh, there's a magic decoder ring inside the manual here. And there you can see it says uh, for that flash pattern, one green and six red is a pre-charge failure. All right, so what's going on, right? So one thing you know I observed is this um, schematic is for club cars 1995 to present. I have a 1993, and um, using the other wiring diagrams I have here, I noticed that um, the negative diode connection had a yellow wire coming from it to the controller. Uh, and then on the newer the newer charts it had it going to uh, an onboard computer which I don't have an onboard computer so I figured the negative solenoid in my case since it can't go to an onboard computer it needs to go to the controller somehow and I figured this B L K S O L negative could probably handle that connection so I think that's used to measure the voltage drop and if the voltage drop is over a certain threshold 
um, the solenoid will fail the pre-charge test so anyway wiring that up seemed to solve the problem as the wheels started to turn <laughs> it's spinning now, isn't it? Daddy fixed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you have it. That face says it all. And that's how it's done. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more golf cart videos to come.